Well, hey, everyone. Welcome to the Jason Wright Show. I am so thrilled today to have as my guest Clark Bertram, one of the most incredibly fit guys. You've probably seen him on the covers of magazines. That's where, I mean, it's funny because I had seen his face, I don't know how many times over the years on magazines and in different uh, things such as that as a, as a male model, a fitness model, a natural male fitness model. And then I, I got to discover him on Instagram. And then when you find out that the guy behind the muscle, the good lo- looks, and the incredible hair is actually uh, an incredible, uh, in, in, an inspirational guy, then it really just brings it all together. And so I am so thrilled today to have you on, Clark. Let's get you, let's see here. Where are you? There you are, my brother. And here we got I've got one little space here we don't need. We've only got uh got three a place for three people here. And I think that we can deal with just the two of us right there. How you doing, brother? I'm awesome. We don't need three people on this, Jason. We're gonna just rock this thing. People are gonna be inspired and motivated and encouraged to take their life to the next level. And that's what it's all about. Let me finish this Instagram post because we've got to multitask these <laughs> days. We've got to put it all out there for the people to see and hear. Well, I'm grateful, right. man. Well, and that's a cool, that's a cool thing about it. And that's why I think when I reached out to you, I put in the email that if there are in the DM, I sent you, if there's anyone that is living up to and taking action on the motto of the Jason Wright show, which is to improve always and always, it is you, man, and just just listening to you, knowing what little I know about your journey, who you are as a person, your mindset, which we're going to talk about. I was like, man, I would love to be able to visit with this guy. I DM'd you. You responded quickly, and I was just like, yes. I went down. I told my wife. I was like, you're not going to believe this. You're not going to believe this. So thank you so much, man, for making time for us. No, thank you, brother. I'm excited, and I love your tagline, improve always in all ways, right? That's all we can attempt to do as human beings is look at our life in such a way that we analyze it without any emotion attached to it or any ego or pride or anything say, what are some of the areas that I can prove? What are ways that I can look at to always improve in all ways? And that goes to, you know, my five principles. It's, it's simple. Exactly. And that's kind of where I want to start, man. I want to, and you take this anywhere you want to Clark, but the things I really want to make sure we cover and it is, first of all, mindset, which I know is one of the wheelhouse issues for you. And we can that's as good a place to start as any. And it's really cool because I told you one of my favorite uh, lines from Scripture, actually, as, as iron sharpens iron, so doth one man another. And that's exactly what I think is going to happen here today. And then another thing, you're talking about mindset. So I've just put together a six-week Vitruvian Challenge, which is my own training course that I'm, I'm just now in the beta phase that I've got about 12 people going through. And the very first week, man, the first day deals with a growth versus a fixed mindset. So take that. Let's start there with what you, how important a mindset has been to you in your life and any advice you have for the listener out there on how to build the right mindset. Well, it's vital in all of our lives. And when we finally recognize that it is truly vital to improve in every area, you'd mentioned your wife, we want to be better husbands. Your mindset will control how good of a husband you can be, how good of a father, how good of a businessman, how good of a coach, how good of a person that's being coached. We have to approach it outside of our ego, kind of on the balcony, outside of our emotions, and realize that every single day there's an opportunity for us to change the way we think and change the words that we say. That really creates the outcomes in our life. It's been vital for me since I was a kid, you know, probably most specifically in the Marine Corps. When you're standing there on those yellow footprints and mom and dad are not there and your comfort creatures of home are not available and your hair is removed. So that's truly your ego, right? You're just like they strip you of your ego and you're standing there with an opportunity to either crumble or rise up. And I chose at that age to rise up and I started to look around and realize how I can be most effective in that process. So it wasn't something that was a pain to do because I think if you mentioned mindset to people, they, they typically cower down and thought, well, I, I can't do that. Well, that's not true. You can, it's all in how you approach it. So, well, and it's interesting that you say that. So I guess you're probably at least the fourth Marine that I've had that talks about those very, those historic yellow footsteps out there on the West coast and, you know, and how that, how that's where they, 
in a lot of their minds, that's where they became a, a man or at least started the journey to completing their manhood. Now, one of the things that I do want to get into is your background altogether, because it's interesting when it comes to someone like you, who is a, a male fitness model with years of experience, you know, you guys are kind of just like you show up on a magazine cover, but between you and Greg Avedon, to be honest with you, I mean, you are the guys that I've probably like, oh, I, that guy, that guy, you know, the, you, the, you were kind of, you were the only two, uh, and that, but there's, I, I want to hear the backstory. How do you take that, that background and bring it to, into a career to where you have so well matched that strong, purposeful mindset with your career to where now, man, you're getting paid to be fit, but you're also, but you're an entrepreneur that it, it's all tied together so sweetly, which is something I'm trying to do. I mean, I'm watching you and I told you, I mean, I, I'm watching you not just from, you know, I'm 47 now, I think you're 58, you said, and I hope to God that I can still be doing the things you're doing at 58, but also from a business aspect and having that, that discipline that you have that's well beyond just looking good and being healthy, man, there's way more to life. Um, how has that, what does your journey look like to get to where you are today? So you mentioned something, you know, how do you turn that exposure into an opportunity to make money? So let me just grab the most recent cover here that I was on. So this one here, you know, I'm still able to get on the covers of these magazines. This is me last year at the age of 57. It's awesome. So I, was, I, I was reflecting on this and I thought about my career because in my garage, there's a lot of magazine covers and my son's friends would come over and they would all look at them and go, wow, you guys must be millionaires. And he would kind of be intrigued by that because you don't get paid to get on the cover of a magazine. There's zero money in it. Really? I didn't fact, know that. I know people who pay money to get on magazine covers. But what I learned early on was if a brand was willing to pay X amount of dollars for this page inside of a magazine, I sat back and I looked at myself on the cover. I'm like, well, hold on. So if they paid $30,000 to be on one page inside a muscle and fitness cover, what is this real estate worth? Right. This has got to be $100,000 worth of real estate that is being exposed to everybody that walks past it in the grocery store or the bookstore or the gas station or wherever they see it. So now it's up to me to take that free advertising that I didn't get paid for. You see, the problem is most people hang their hat on, what am I going to get in exchange? Yep. Well, the most I've ever been paid was $500 to be on the cover of a magazine. But the amount of money that I've turned magazine covers into is a completely different story because I was smart enough to recognize and get out of my ego and work on this idea of, all right, if this company thought enough about me to put me on the cover of their magazine and it's worth a hundred grand in my estimation, I can turn this into more. And that's what I've done my entire career. I've never really had a job that I've, I've made my living off of my physical prowess, the way I look, my ability to communicate, my love for people. That's really what it comes back to at the end of the day. That's so awesome. So you've been a content creator before content creation was even a, in, in the, out there in the ecosystem as something that you, that you did. And, you know, it's, it's funny you say that because I can relate in the sense that, you know, people, whenever you tell them that you have a podcast, like I just had this conversation the other day with one of my buddies who, um, he got his start. Uh, we met each other through the James Altucher podcast, who's, you know, and Altucher's podcast has millions of downloads. And when I started this, you don't make money on podcasts. I mean, if you're Joe Rogan, you make money and a lot of it on the podcast or, or something like that. But most of us, we will do this for free in order to get opportunities to meet guys like you. And then you leverage that into the getting to do the things you love to do that you feel good about. So it's pretty awesome that you've been doing that at such a high level for so long. And then now you've taken that to social media. And what has, because that's the thing too that um, we've got to talk about in this conversation is your social media is one of the, the bright spots and I will be, you know, I've got two college age daughters uh, and they've grown up in the era of social media at that age. And I'm like any other old fart. I will bitch and moan about social media and the ills of it. Cause I do think there's a lot of elements of it that are disgusting, but every once in a while you can have someone like yourself come along that is shedding light in all of that darkness and positivity and actually free education in, in that setting. 
where did that start and how have you built that? It's, there's two ways that I kind of answer this question. There's the spiritual answer in which I say, this is what I was born and created to do. I have a true desire deep within the core of who I am as a man, as a person, as a human, to impact and inspire, uplift, educate, encourage, whatever word you want to choose to describe what it is that I do. But then there's the business side of it that is understanding that social media is an absolute must. If any of us want to be relevant in today's world, we must be have some sort of social media presence. Yeah. And it's it's very interesting that this Pareto principle applies to every aspect of life, the 80-20 rule. Yep. 80% of the people on social media are great. 20% suck. I choose not to focus on the 20% and be the brightest light of the 80% that's in my circle. I, and it's not like I attempt to do it. It's, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, for out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. What you see is what you get. This is me, 24-7, 365. I don't put on a show for anybody. I don't act like an influencer. I am Clark Bartram, and you will hear me wreck someone's day if they, if they say the wrong thing. But more importantly than that, I am here to build them up after I make them understand that being ugly on social media is not a good look. I, it happens more on TikTok than anywhere else. And it happened to me yesterday. I was out there doing one of my trick shots and some people got on there and, and they got the Clark Bartram comeback. And, and it's it's pretty aggressive when it happens. And I don't I don't get that. I remember I was watching one of your lives uh, here recently and you were uh talking about you're making one of your protein shakes you put collagen in there and some somebody comes on and says something about negative about collagen it's and and you know you, you took it stride like you know some people just have to you know they, they would have to throw negativity out there and it's like yeah and i'm like who's sitting there and why watch okay you don't like call you know collagen or whatever the hell and by the way this is what i want to talk about too um and maybe this is a good segue into the cool thing i like about uh, and I try to keep myself in in very good physical condition, not because it, yeah, I'm vain is the next guy. I want to look good for my wife. I mean, I'm, I'm there's I'm not going to hide the ball there. But more than anything, I want to be healthy in older age. Uh, I just you feel better. Life is sweeter when you're healthy. Bottom line. And so, for and I also think it's such an outward example of who you are internally. And so I would like for you to just talk to the folks about what how your fitness has been, because you said what you see is what you get, you know, how your fitness and taking care of yourself. And also one of the things that I love about you, dude, and look, not to try to get all scientific here, but someone that's 58 years old that looks like you and has that head of hair, it pretty much says, dude, if anybody's asked if you're, if you're natural or not, no, you don't get to have that hair. Now you can be natural and be bald, God, you know, just genetics, but you don't get to, you roid up in your youth, be 58 and have that head of hair. So how important has it been to you as an outward reflection of just who you are internally to maintain the discipline and the fitness through the years? Well, that's my message to men. You know, at 58, I've become this, I guess I'll use shining light because I, I want to be that person that gets the attention, not because I want it on me, but because I want to expose what is possible to people. So I need to be physically fit, emotionally fit, mentally, spiritually, and relationally, and all these things. So I realized that this is my hook. Like I need to have visible abs. This is my hook. But when I hook them, right, it's a pattern interrupt. So you yep. see a 58 year old guy on a football field catching his own pass, like I did that yesterday. Yep. I did it three times. You stop for a minute and go, wait a minute, hold up. How's this guy do this? So you ask the question long enough, and then I come in with whatever message it is that I'm sharing, then you click the next button. So if I was not that example, if discipline wasn't a part of who I am, and, and that carried me to the place where I'm at today, and I don't do drugs, I don't need drugs, I don't want drugs, there will be a point in time where I'll consider TOT if, in fact, it's necessary. But at 58, I am perfectly fine the way I am. And people, whether or not they want to believe it, that's completely up to them. I have no reason to argue with anyone about it. However, I do sometimes. But it's, it's important for me to help men understand specifically that they have been lying to themselves. They've been believing the wrong sources. And they bought into this mis 
conception that when they hit 50 years old, they got to change everything that they're doing in life. Yep. When I try to be an example of, no, you don't. Get off the sidelines, get onto the playing field, and I'll coach you up. Yep. You just got to make take some action first. I love that message, man. And that's one of the things that, um, you know, because you and I, again, so eye to eye on that. I see so many, like, great example. Every morning as part of my, you know, kind of getting myself ready in the morning, I have this long morning routine. Part of it is when I go on my walks, I'm going to do at least four or five just all out sprints, right? And I think about how many guys that are in our, of our generation that I told my wife this one time, I'm like, could you imagine if, fill in the blank and I won't say it on the podcast, if they tried to sprint, they'd fall over, they'd die. And it's like, why? You can still, if you, if you keep your body right, you can still do the things that you did when you were younger, but you got to get out there and do them. And that brings me to something that um, you said that I thought, I'm, I'm going to probably write a, a, a blog post on this or an article about this for, for my newsletter right now or, or this week. Tricks versus technique. Brother, I love that. And I may pull up here in a minute the horseshoe video, but I want you to talk a little bit about, you know, the difference between, because you just mentioned it, drugs and all the other crap that guys start thinking they have to do because of age. They've lost the edge. Well, they start trying a lot of tricks, you know, quote unquote hacks that are really just stupid tricks. Talk a little bit, Clark, about the difference between tricks versus technique. So we're talking specifically about men and the aging process, but this applies to everybody, female, and a lot of younger men and younger women need to hear this information too. So the first thing I'll say is I consider myself a bridge between where somebody currently is, if they're not feeling good, and the least invasive way to create the next evolution of who they are, a more fit version of themselves. Because what I have noticed and what I've spoken about a million times with men one-on-one -on -one is they will go from one extreme to another. So a guy will hear his buddy say, yeah, I went to this clinic or my doctor put me on these shots or this cream or this patch or this potion and I feel great. I, 20 pounds fell off of me. Well, that's not how it works. And just because your buddy may have got lucky you doing the same thing is not the way, it's certainly not the first step. So that's where my principles come in, mindset, meals, movement, community, and supplementation. So with respect to technique over a trick, so I do these things, these, we'll call them stunts. I bend the horseshoe, I blow up a hot water bottle, I rip a phone book, I tear decks of cards, I do all of these feats of strength. And I learned very quickly in one of the hardest environments ever that you need to be honest, you need to be transparent and you need to be humble about the message because me showing up on the internet or in a prison is where I learned this lesson. I don't come on here like, look at me, I'm the greatest thing ever. Of course, I use this gift, right? This hook of my body, my hair, my smile, my voice, whatever it is that people are attracted to, I use that as the hook to get them to hear the message of. There are techniques that I've learned in life on how to get you in shape. There are techniques that I've learned on how to tear a phone book. All of the information, it's the same ending message, if you will. So if I try and tear a phone book like I tear a piece of paper, I'll never be successful. But someone wiser than me who has a lot of practice doing this taught me the technique, not the trick. It's no sleight of hand. It's no illusion. It is a technique where you push the phone book a certain way and you peel it back a certain way, and I can teach anyone. I can teach one of your college-age daughters how to do it, and they will be making money at the next event that they're at, their sorority thing or whatever. I can tear a phone book. No, you can't watch me. Boom. Because somebody who learned the technique and did it thousands of times taught them, and then here's what happens. Here's the big thing that I noticed right in the middle of teaching a man in a prison one time how to tear a phone book. When it got hard, now I want everyone to listen to me right now. When it got hard, I watched him, and I knew it was going to happen from experience. He started to do it. it. He started to fail. He instantly relied on his old way of thinking and started to try and tear like this. I said, stop, stop. This is in front of a thousand men in a prison, right? These are tough people. Stop. You're not listening to me. What are you doing? You're not being coached. Do you trust me? 
Yeah, I trust you. Okay, then listen to what I'm telling you. Stop what you're doing. Your way of thinking is what ended you up in prison. Wow. <laughs> you, know, you, think you know better than me. Let's go. And all these guys are like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So this guy got all fired up. I got in his face. I screamed at him. I said, do what I told you. Pow. <laughs> Nuts. Everyone went crazy. I said, wow, I'm on to something here. Wow. I'm on to something. You got to stay on people because that's what happens. The conditioned mind, the conditioned behavior, your parents, your coaches, your teachers, all of these people that may have had the best interests in mind, but taught you the wrong things because they were never taught the right things. And it just continues to go down the line. So when someone says, oh, when you're 50, you got to get on drugs. Oh, when you're 50, you can't play football. Oh, when you're 50, you can't go run and sprint. It's a lie. And, and I'm here to prove to you that it can be done, but we got to take it one step at a time. You got to follow my techniques. There ain't no trick to it. There's no hack. It's a technique and it's a process. I, I think that's you fantastic. Fired up, man. Well, I, it's fantastic. It's such a good message, you know, and here's one of the things too, that here's who you remind me of, man. You kind of like, you've got Mike Rowe, who's out there trying to t- talk about the virtues of good, hard ass work, which I think this society is losing sight of more and more every day. The way you strike me, Clark is kind of like the fitness Mike Rowe of just, Hey, look, if you get your head right and you take care of yourself, you can do these things. And let's talk about that a little bit, man, because I think that one of the things, there's two things I think it's really sad. I, I mentioned this in one of my, um, my shows here just uh, a couple of weeks ago that it's almost, um, it's almost, uh, you know, taboo to, to be proud of America these days and to, to, to think, to, to, to talk about the amazing things. I just come from a meeting at NASA and I was like, for the first time in my adult life that I was like, I've been out there so many times, but for some reason this time it just really moved me. Like I was a little kid again, looking around at all the things that once, like we talk about mindset, these things only existed in these scientists and these brilliant individuals' minds. And now we're sitting here looking at them. You know, John F. Kennedy, when he gave his famous speech at Rice University, he was talking about sending these people to the moon and using technology that had not even been created yet. We used to think like that. Now we think about, we play small ball. And I've always said, or what I, the point I made in that deal was like, people are so afraid these days to just go, what if? What if I did that? What if at age 50, I decided to go ahead and get my health, take control of my health for the first time? Where did, where did you get that, man? Was it the Marines? Was it, you know, family? I mean, where did that come to you? And then just kind of take that in, if you, if you will, about kind of your idea of what it means to be a man, because I just don't think we talk about that enough. And in and, and the modern, the postmodern version of what a man is, Brother, that's a foreign thing to me, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. So the first thing I want to do is rewind a little bit and, and remind everyone of something that you just said. This man went to meetings at NASA multiple times. So there's something going on there behind the scenes that's pretty high level. <laughs> so uh, let me let me just to say my appreciation <laughs> for that. And, you know, that that's super cool, man. Not everyone can say that. I just went to a meeting at NASA. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> well. With regards to being timid on being proud to be an American and all that sort of stuff. I see it, right? I see it all over the place. And as a Marine, I can remember when I was at the AFI station, this is where you go before you become a Marine, before you go to boot camp. You're sitting there with all of these other coolies, as they call them, Mm -hmm. and you're waiting to get on the airplane and fly or take the bus. I went to South Carolina, to Paris Island. This news person, I could see them and and there was a general with them and I could see them looking around the room, this news person with a general, right? in his dress blues, looking at all these young men getting ready to go to the Marine Corps. And they pointed at me, they pointed at me and I'm like, oh snap, what? what?" (laughs) And they walked over and this general said, young man, I want this news team to interview you. I was like, oh goodness. You know, I guess I looked squared away and I was. So. They said in one word, why have you enlisted in the Marine Corps? And without hesitation, I said patriotism. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that's lost in our world today because of the fact that this country is what it is. It allows us the freedom to be who we are. And it's kind of gotten a little bit out of control in my opinion. So without going into much detail on that, you talked about, you know, this idea of being a man, my shirt. This is the program that I have for my guys that I coach. It's Maximized Men. They're on a pathway 
to becoming a maximized man. What is that? Like that? It's not some toxic man like this world is throwing around now. These are men that love their wives, respect people. They're strong, but gentle. They're confident, but classy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's all of these oxymoron type of Absolutely. attributes yep. that these men have that don't require that they are anything but someone who is honorable and someone who understands that being a maximized man isn't about how big your muscles are or any of these other things that some people may have blamed a toxic man of being. And, and there are people out there like that. But again, it's the 80-20 rule. 80% mm -hmm. of men out there are really trying to be better men. They just don't know where to go. They've stopped. There's arrested development. They stopped getting coached. They, they realized that when they became the father, like they thought, okay, this is it for me. When the truth is at 58, I feel more coachable than I've ever been. Yep. And I seek that out. And I love when someone corrects me and shows me an area of my life that I wasn't able to see on my own. And that to me is truly what being a maximized man is about. And if we all strive every single day, like you had mentioned earlier at the beginning of this, to improve all ways in all ways, then everything will take care of itself. Man, that's it's so cool because the maximized man, man, that's kind of where I came up with um, the uh, like I told you, my my training course is the the Vitruvian Lab, and it's that very thing, man. It's like you know Da Vinci's idea with the Vitruvian Man to to draw the perfectly proportioned man physically. I got that. I saw. I was reading Walter Isaacson's biography about uh, Da Vinci, and I saw that. I was like. Man, that'd be kind of cool. I mean, you take that, like, what does it mean to be the perfectly proportioned man, what you just said, spiritually, physically, nutritionally, relationally, you know, to be be that that husband and that father that, you know, to, to really focus and not get out of balance. And so I think that's one of the things that a lot of a lot of men, I'll speak to men in particular, is, you know, we, we get in this lane where we get so laser focused on that and then we neglect all these other areas when in fact, and I also think that's another great, uh, there's something there with uh, the oxymoron reference you made because I think that that's where a lot of people get confused about men in today's society, brother, is that we are, if we're doing it right, we are a lot of walking, we're, we're, we're morons, we're oxymorons. You know, what you said, this guy that can be like you, be a Marine and be a freaking warrior, can also hold a small child in their arms and love and caress that baby like the most gentle of giants that anyone's ever seen. There, there is, to, to really do this right, there probably is a lot of oxymoronic behavior, but the, the fact is, people want to kind of put us in a category of of all the, because you know all they see and highlight, because some of our some of our fellow members of the species, you know, make it such that the the bad part gets highlighted, but you forget there's also this other side, and uh, I like that that we you know as men we are a lot of oxymorons. That's good stuff, man. I, I think I said this the other day in a podcast. I think I'm probably one of the most confusing people on the planet when people see me and the energy that I come with and. I'll often say, I love me some me. T.O. said it one time years ago, and he got ridiculed for being so in love with himself and so confident in who he is. People stop you in that moment and go, oh, he's so, you know, egotistical and, and he's so arrogant. No, 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 no. That love for myself extends all the way through to the other side. And the confidence that I have extends all the way through to the other side. You mentioned the child. I have a hard time when I see a little baby and I hold it. Not only am I soft and gentle, but I begin to cry. And it's because I understand what this is, the potential. And I want a grandkid so bad, I can't even begin to tell you. One of the biggest compliments I ever had in my life, one day my wife and I were in a Sprint store. Here was a couple years ago. And there was a Hispanic grandmother with the daughter, and they had a child. And they kept staring at me in the Sprint store. And I'm like, why are they looking at me? And then I'm thinking, well, there's no way they know me from the magazines because they don't look like they read bodybuilding magazines. Maybe they saw me on the news. I just was going through all this stuff. Then they very politely approached me. And in very broken English, the daughter said, would you mind holding my baby? I'm going to, man. <laughs> she said, would you mind holding my baby? And I wanted to hold that baby the whole time. I was telling my wife, I want to hold this baby so bad. Look how cute it is. 
the same time they were thinking, we want this man to hold the baby because what she had explained to me, I don't know if it's the Hispanic culture across the board, but for that little family right there, they had a belief that when they saw someone with a good spirit, oh, wow. that it was a good thing for that person to hold that baby. Wow. And I so appreciatively held that child and looked at it and started to cry in the middle of a sprint store because somebody recognized in me this guy with bravado, this guy with confidence, this guy that loves himself so much where the people could go, oh, look at him. They saw beyond the shell that is Clark Bartram in the person, in the energy that trusted enough to hand over this God's biggest gift in the world to me. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> I'll never forget that as long as I live. And that's what I want people to see. I don't want them to stop at, look at me out here throwing a football. Um, screw him, this guy, who does he think he is? You're missing out on the yeah. best part of me. So, you know, has there ever been, because one of the things whenever we talk about self-love, I think a lot of people get confused with that. Really what I, I, I think, because I've gone through, I've walked through this man with it's, and I've been, I've been accused of, you know, being cocky, arrogant or whatever. But really it, what the confusion is, is if you are happy and you know who you are and you become comfortable with that, a lot of people, because it's so rare, most people are going around this world in the witness protection program. They're not being who they really are because they're trying to live up to the standards of either the world around them, Instagram, maybe family members. They're trying to be this person that they know it's not who they are. They're just trying to live up to somebody else's uh, you know, idea of who they should be. So whenever they meet somebody that is like, I know who I am. I'm comfortable with who I am. I know my intents are good. I want to be a light in this world. That can get confused for haughtiness or arrogance. Has there ever been a time in your life where you had to overcome that, where you you had to like go, you finally you grew to go, look, this is who I am. And then, because I've learned that whenever I, it took me a lot of years, brother. I mean, it took me probably till I, after I was 40. It's one of the reasons why I started doing stuff like this. It's like, I don't want to do all these other things. Yeah, I may be good at a thing, but that doesn't mean I love to do that thing. And it ain't about money. It's not about fame or, you know, all that. I just want to be that positivity in, in life and focus on things that really charge my batteries from the inside and watch the joy just kind of sneak up on me. Has there been a time or a, was there like a pivotal demarcation point in your life where you decided, okay, this is who I am and I'm going to run with it. I'm going to be who I am. And, and, and go all that and be that maximized man. I don't think there was a DMZ necessarily. Yeah. You know, like this line, I think it was a natural flow. Okay. I naturally flowed through this process of gaining more and more appreciation and love for who I am, where I came from, the struggles that I've had in life, the success I've had in life, and all of what I've done. And one day I said something to the effect of, I'm unapologetically me. And the way I Beautiful. got the wave of appreciation back for that with my men that I coach, they're like, yeah, coach, be you. That's why we love you. You're unapologetically you and you don't care what anyone thinks. And I can remember as a young person, my mom being the same way. And as a young person being embarrassed of my mom because she didn't give a flying F what anybody thought about her. She was Linda Bartram. Big Red, everybody loved her. She loved everybody. You ate food when you came to the house. There was never a question asked, but if you crossed the line, you got what was coming to you. And I was like, whoa, you know who I am? I'm Linda Bartram. <laughs> I'm Big Red, you know, but in, in, in a different sense. Yeah. So now, like, I look at that woman where she's at today no longer that energetic being that she was. She's on her way to the next phase of her existence in this world. And I realized that I need to take advantage of that right now. And there won't be a day that goes by that I won't stand up with my chest up, my shoulders back and go, I'm Clark Bartram. I love me some me. Believe yeah. that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I also love you too. So come on into my world. Let's go. Yeah. I love that, dude. I love it because, there, again, that was hard for me. That was hard for me to get to that point. And I think there's a lot of people that that, that don't have that. And 
I hope they hear that message and realize, okay, first of all, know who you are, accept who you are, and, and own it. You know, make that part better. You know, work on the bad parts, but, you know, make that, make, make the good accentuate that. All right. I want to know, I'm going to bring this up, dude. And for those of you watching on the YouTube channel, you'll get to see this. And those of you listening, you'll get to listen to this. I'm going to get, um, I'm going to get Clark to do, if I don't screw this up, man. Okay. Oh, look there. We're looking good so far. How, did, oh, wait, we got to get you back on here. Let me see here. All right. Cause you need to commentate this thing. I've got a little extra guy down here for some reason. There we go. All right. Okay, here we go. And what I'm doing, for those of you listening, I'm pulling up on Instagram, Clark's page, and I want you to tell me how these tricks okay, have so started. I'm going to do this shot again where I throw the football, hit the crossbar, catch my own pass. The hardest part is not necessarily hitting the crossbar. It's reacting to whichever way the ball bounces. And I hope it goes either straight back, left, or right, because last time it went forward and there was no way. So you gotta hit the bar first like this. You catch it like that. <laughs> you caught your <laughs> own freaking pass, dude. Let's go, man. There's so much I wanna say, but I'm not gonna say it. Comment below. <laughs> I freaking love that, man. So how did this start? And tell me about because I didn't I, I mean, you know, t talk to me about your your friendship. It sounds like with Big Bad Brad, Brad, Brad Johnson, right? Uh, yes. As who, Tampa Bay Buccaneer uh, quarterback, you know, Super Bowl champion, who does these amazing things out on the football field. And dude, you're going toe to toe with him. Tell me why that started and how you're doing what you're doing out there on the football field all by yourself. So first of all, we need to get him on your podcast because you're going to love him. He oh, I love that man. Guy. So I see this guy on TikTok one day, and, and, and he threw a football. And I'm like, okay, he didn't throw a football like a normal person. He threw a football like he's thrown it millions of times in his life. And then I saw him walking, and you could tell that he had beat himself up. I'm like, this guy has gotten the most out of his body. Who is he? You know what I mean? Like, that was my first thing. And then I looked. I'm like, oh, my God, that's Brad Johnson, yeah. Super Bowl champion quarterback. I mean, <laughs> legend in the league. So I started following it. I started seeing him do this stuff. So I reached out to him one day. I said, hey, I, I need you on my Zoom call to talk to my guys that I coach. Within seconds, done. We hit it off. He gave me his number. So I got him on, and I was sitting right here in this exact spot. I said, I challenge you, brother. I challenge you to throw a football, bounce it off the turf, put it in a trash can from 30 feet away, 30 yards away. He's like, 30 yards. Da, 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 da. Okay. So I literally ended that Zoom call. I went over to the school. I climbed two fences and I threw the ball for two days until I made that shot and I, I got him on that shot. So then we started going back and forth. So this is what you talk about iron sharpens iron. It's exactly what's happening right now with me and Brad Johnson because he's over the age of 50. And just because he's a Super Bowl champion quarterback, you know, he's got two knees that need replaced. He, he understands the value that I'm bringing to his life. I understand the value that he's bringing to my life. So we use it to elevate each other's game. So he'll go do a shot. I'll go do a shot. And we got kind of this game of horse going right now. But everyone tells me, Clark, catch your own pass. You know, throw it 40 yards and catch it. I don't think there's anybody on planet Earth that could throw their own pass 40 yards and catch it. I don't care who you are in the NFL. Don't see it happening. And I thought to myself, how can I do this? So I get out there and these, these shots appear to me. Uh -huh. Like I'll be doing one and then something else will speak to me and I'll change mid flow. And I'm out there by myself, talking to myself, doing these things and to answer the question about that one in particular, seven tries, it took me to get that. Seven. Wow. <laughs> so I, I've done it two other times and the last time I did it, it took me about a hundred and the time before it took me about eight or 10. That, that shot's relatively easy for me to do. And, but, so I'm out there talking to myself. I'm out there coaching myself. I'm out there lifting myself up. Yeah. Not another person on the planet is there. This concept of I'm challenging a friend. I can't wait to show him what I did. This is going to be awesome. And then everybody asks me, why don't you take more than one football? Because I want to run. Yeah. Why don't you have somebody out there throwing the ball back? Because I want to get a workout. What do you get from this? If you have to ask, it's like, asking an artist, what does that painting mean? I don't even care to ask, answer the question. Yep. I'm out there getting busy living. Yep. You know, we got one life. That's yep. it. Yep. That's my birthday on the side. Down below it says one, you know, a limit. I one love that. 
Yeah, busy living. I had that custom painted for me by my buddy Sergio, and uh, many guys have had it made since. So I just get out there, and I've done literally dozens and dozens and dozens of these things, many of which people accuse me, the 20% accuse me of CGI and editing. And I'm like, are you serious? You think I'm going to hire some Hollywood CGI person to fake that shot? Yeah. No, I'm putting in the work, you know? But see, okay. But that's the point, dude, that like they don't understand what you just said. The artist who will actually go out and pursue the art because of what it does for his his soul, his spirit, just the enjoyment, not because a bunch of freaking people are going to are going to like it on social media. There's so few people that understand. I always call like every time I do a podcast. You know, I don't get like I told you earlier, this is like my magazine cover, you know. I'm not getting paid to do this podcast. I always tell people this is someone once said you know, everyone should go build a birdhouse because and, and because no one, no professor is going to tell you that it's good just because you regurgitated the crap that they wanted to hear ideologically. And so it's, so the only way that you you will sit there by yourself, build a birdhouse and you will know whether it's a piece of crap or whether it's good. You will judge for yourself whether it's good. And so I use as a metaphor, when I tell people my podcast is my birdhouse that I build every single week I build two of them a week and I know whether they're good and I build it for me for my fulfillment I hope I hope that the fruit of me being the best version of myself and improving always and always of the podcast and everything I do will spill over into my fellow man but it has nothing to do with the likes or anything like that but yet I'm not surprised you get the hate brother because that's so many people are conditioned with that mindset that why would you do anything that a lot of people won't praise you and, and you know, all this other crap because they've never experienced that thing that C.S. Lewis, he wrote an awesome book called Surprised by Joy. And one of the, th- the, the, the theme of that book is joy in and of itself or happiness for that matter is not something that you can go attain. If it, if it, if it were, we just go find the formula and go get happy every time. No, the joy is you out there by yourself getting winded, getting some exercise, and then hitting it. And all of a sudden, the joy, it just kind of sneaks up on you, you know? I mean, if more people understood that, we'd be a lot better off. And I guess that um, I'd be remiss, unless you want to add something to that, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about fitness with one of the most fit guys on the freaking planet. So talk to people. And I bring it up because you're talking, because it's one of the things you mentioned it. And I'm sitting there thinking, dude, seven times, seven sprints. That's, that's, that, that was a good workout for most anyone right there, just doing that trick. People that are listening to this, they see you, and, they, and they're like, you know, 30% body fat. They're winded. They've got hypertension. They're, they're just, you know, inflamed. How do they get started, and where do they start, Clark? Getting started stops most people. You know, the act of actually starting, I am a big believer in taking action and not just taking action, but taking immediate action. So you start by stopping talking about it and taking action. So let me just give you an example of we'll, we'll use the funnel example of my program. So part of why I'm out there is not only for my own enjoyment, joy, it's also to create a hook, right? I've got no shirt on. You can see I'm fit. I'm running back and forth. And by the way, I did my sprint workout before I did all of those throws. Wow. And so I realized that that is going to hook people. And then when I said, there's so much I want to say, I'm not going to say it. It was me getting ready to go into the mode I naturally go in. Because again, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. I was going to give this motivational message, this and that and the other thing. And I thought to myself, nope, not this time. Let it go. So I just let it go. So I will create an ad using something like that. It will lead to an offer that men are on that offer because they had a need that they recognized in themselves already. I didn't knock on their door and say, you need my program. They were one on the internet typing in, get fit over 50. So this guy shows up on the football field. There I am. And they're like, damn, is that possible? Is that real? And they have all these questions. And then I'm convincing enough to get them to click that next thing. And it takes them to the evidence, social proof, Mm -hmm. guy after guy after guy after guy, literally thousands of men I've worked with in my lifetime, specifically more now than ever, I could line them up 
I always say this, if I was walking the, down the street with the men that I coach and one of these haters on TikTok walked up and said, I want to beat you up, they would say, step aside, coach. We got you. It's awesome. We love you that much. Guaranteed. So they see all this social proof because maybe they don't believe me. Maybe they don't think that they can attain the type of physique that I have or the level or whatever. It doesn't matter. That's not my point. My point is, it's possible for you. Mm -hmm. I can help you. I have a proven system. All you need to do is take action by clicking this button. So here's where the big disconnect comes. Fear, disbelief, you know, all of these things. Oh, someone screwed me in the past. I joined this program. I never did it. That's not my problem. <laughs> That's your problem. You didn't take action. So now I get them to click that button. Okay, I'm going to buy. Boom. It ain't over yet. Now you got to download the information. That's another form of action. Now you got to read it. Now you got to apply it. Now you got to join my group and introduce yourself. Oh, I don't do video. I hate Facebook. Shut up. <laughs> you know, the Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. If you don't like Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook, use his platform for something good. Exactly. You know, right. So come in and, and, and my one of my mentors, a man by the name of Ed Cole, great, great man of God. He always taught us you're only committed to what you confess. So if I get a guy to that point where they clicked, 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 they bought the program. Now they're in the Facebook group, even though I'm over 50, I don't go on Facebook. I've convinced them to get that far. The next step is shoot a video. Tell me where you're from, why you're here, how can I support you and what we need to look out for. What do you normally do to stop yourself from this process? Well, I don't do video, you do now. Mm -hmm. So I force these guys into doing what I know is going to get them the most results. And it's taken one action step after another. And I've been able to really finesse that process along because I've done it literally. When I say thousands and thousands of times, that's not an exaggeration. It's that's the truth. And I have the evidence. It's there. So you have to stop thinking about it. That's a, that's a long way to say stop procrastinating, take action, and take immediate action. I love that. You know, And one of my favorite quotes ever that basically you just beautifully said was, Zig Ziglar, he used to always say, you don't have to be great to start, but you got to start to be great. It ain't going to happen unless you take action. And, you know, so one of the things you've mentioned, and I want to give you the opportunity to, you know, expound on a little bit, your five principles, because I think that's some of the, that's some of the media, you know, teaching that you, that you give to your, your students or hell man, you, you give it for free if people will just follow and listen to your Instagram stuff. So talk about your five principles a little bit, man. So they're all over my office. There's a big placard on the wall. I've got these placards everywhere. They're on t-shirts, they're on hats, they're on stickers. My guys follow these. This is, this is a simple way to manage yourself throughout this process of becoming a maximized man, a maximized woman, whatever it is that you want to do. And they're in specific order. Mindset, meals, movement, community, and supplementation in that order. People will ask me all the time, how important is nutrition? Well, nutrition is very important, but it's not 100% of the equation until you get your mind set because we're not lacking in information with nutrition. Right. You could Google all of these things. My thing is you have to get your mind set on what you want to do. Then whatever nutritional program you follow, you have to continually reinforce this belief of this is going to work. So that goes back to mindset. Then when you start exercising, it goes back to mindset. Okay, I'm gonna do this program, I'm sore, I don't have the time, all of these things. Yeah, go back to the mindset. Community helps the mindset. You know, we're two more of the gathered. You know, iron sharpens iron. We have all of these references to the fact that when you have an accountability partner, I was listening to it this morning with uh, Brene Brown and her vulnerability. Mm -hmm. She said 95%, I think, increased chances of success when you have an accountability partner, wow. when guys join my program, not only do you have me, you have thousands of other men who've gone through the program that were like you at one point in time, disbelief, not sure, you know, looking for a, something to steal from them around the corner. They finally did it. Now they got the results. These are not my coaches. I put you into a smaller group called a huddle when you get in my, my program. So I know how this works because again, I've, I've got so much experience in doing it that I have created a system that if you take action, it's pretty much foolproof. You're, you're gonna get results. If your results are tempered with reality, like don't think you're gonna be Arnold, you know, cause I'll never be Arnold or Michael Hearn or, 
you know, any of these other guys, I can help you become the best version of yourself if you choose to be help yourself become the best version of yourself. I love Too many it. people give me credit. They're like, you help me. And I love when people correct them on one of my Zoom calls. No, no, brother, you did the work. Yeah. Clark facilitated a platform. You did the work. Yeah, but that that's I love that that's so awesome, man, to use your gift to to change lives in that way. Now there's one of the things that I do want to kind of get a little bit into the whole fitness weeds on just a little bit. That's one of your uh which one of your tenants there is uh the supplementation. What are what what is the supplementation that you're gonna take every day, no matter what, and why? What what's that core? So the first thing that I need to address is why supplementation is on there. Get. And it's not for the reasons that most people have automatically de defaulted to. It's I want you and anyone else who joins my program to become an educated consumer. I'm not going to try and shove something down your throat like, hey, take my supplements. And this. I do have a supplement line. I will sell you supplements. Absolutely. I'm in this for profit at some point. I, I, let's make no question about that, right? But I'm not going to let that override my desire to help people first. So it's my responsibility as a coach to ask my guy to look at everything they're taking and ask themselves why. Are you taking it because your favorite influencer told you to? Are you on prescription medications that you could possibly get off with the right mindset, meals, movement, community, right? And other supplementation that might be natural and not prescribed because I don't want to get into this whole conversation of sick care compared to health care, but we could. Right. <laughs> so that's what I do. So in regards to what I take and what I recommend is, you know, I start with the very basics. You start with a multivitamin and a multimineral, and they're not one size fits all. I worked with a company for a long time called Persona. I don't work with them anymore, but I'm still very, very proud to send people to them because they do sort of a customized blend based upon an assessment yep. that you would take and I would take. Now we have something a little bit more specific to me because a 58 year old man doesn't need the same thing as a 20 year old girl. And you, is, it, is, that, is that like blood and hormone panels or something like that, Clark? Or what no, is, it's, it's just a written assessment, but okay. at least they get a lifestyle understanding as opposed to, you know, okay, we're just going to give you vitamin C, D, yep. B, you know, and all of this when you might not need it. Got it. You know, maybe you're not sleeping. Maybe you have joint problems. Maybe you need a little bit of cognitive boosting. So they just custom customized it. And you can drill down even more. There's been ones where I've taken a scoop of poop and sent it in, mm -hmm. you know, to sure. get a very, very specific blend for me. Sure. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking differently. Than a lot sure, of too. sure. Now, what else are you going to put in that multi? And then are you going to do like creatine or I think you've talked about that quite a bit, which that's yeah. I take five grams of creatine every day without fail. Yeah, there's, you know, there's a lot of studies that have been done on creatine, you know, in regards to boosting testosterone. That's just one of the things that they've studied. But there are a lot of different reasons that people can benefit from creatine, even though back in the day there were, you know, a lot of, I don't know, misinformation maybe about it with yep. football players in Texas and all this kind of stuff. Yep. But so that even wouldn't be the first one that I would recommend. I would step back from that and do an assessment. Do you have joint pain? Okay, so if you have joint pain, we need to address the inflammation in that joint pain. So I'm using different products right now. I just did a story on my Instagram. I'm using Kratom, CBD, and turmeric blend, which helps me massively with the inflammation in my joints. Okay. Because being as active as I am, that's just going to be a natural byproduct of running 10 sprints and then you know seven more afterwards and then whatever else I did that day, the cardio, you're going to have some effect. Yep. So what I've done is experimented enough to know what works for me. So then from then I would build up, of course, you want a good protein powder that you can afford and enjoy mm -hmm. because you're going to miss a meal or you're going to want to replace a meal with something like that. I'm a big believer, like you had mentioned earlier in collagen, for the hair, skin, and nails and connective mm -hmm. tissue. You know, right? Our, our skin loses elasticity because of collagen. And, and there's so many things. My nails grow so fast because of the collagen that I take. So there's nobody on planet Earth that can tell me that collagen is not beneficial for Clark Archer. Right. Because right. they don't walk in my shoes. <laughs> right. So these people that don't understand, they just don't understand. Yeah. And then and then from there, I, I have a greens product in my line that I recommend everybody take because you can put this in your kids' drinks and they're getting all of these great greens that they wouldn't get. You know, and then we could even have the discussion on 
how these freeze dry products are oftentimes better than some of the fresh produce that we get because when fresh produce is picked yep. and how it ripens in a yep. truck and then it's sprayed and it sits there and for as long as it possibly can in a grocery store till somebody buys it yep. compared to something that's picked at the peak of its freshness freeze dried and you know it's organic mm -hmm. that's not a bad option yep. you know we just get again misinformed people go if it's not fresh you know unless you have a garden in your backyard this is a really good alternative yeah yeah so, you know well, now, as far as like one of the things you talked about that I think is really cool, like whenever you're making your videos, for those folks out there, this because I, I bring this up, I'm, I'm looking for, you may say, no, Jason, you're stupid and that's wrong. Uh, but I think that one of the things I've learned as I've gotten older is that it's okay to to go out and just run, have fun, just move and let that be your workout for that day. If it's just going out and running some sprints and or playing some, you know, Frisbee golf or whatever, that you just do something, just move. I have gotten to the point where now I allow myself to count a two mile, you know, or three mile walk as okay, that's some low, low key movement, but at least it's okay, dude. You don't have to kill yourself every single like I used to do like a soul crushing workout seven days a week. That's just not good for you. And you know, we only got so much tread on these tires. So Am I right in that? Or, you know, because a lot of people say, no, I'm not going to go to a gym. I'm not going to do something like what Clark and Jason are talking about. But you don't really have to as long as you just get out and do something, right? You are 100% accurate and you're not stupid. You're brilliant. Remember, you went to NASA at the meeting. So you're <laughs> they let anybody in, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I would prefer that the general population went out and did what you said as opposed to to going into a gym because the reality is you can get resistance training, which is vitally important for bone mass density and, and uh, metabolism, and muscular strength and skeletal, which is bone mass. And, but you could lift rocks. Yep. You could do like, I've got a workout that I posted a while ago. I was, you know, doing, pushing up a, a picnic bench and throwing a rock over a limb and, and doing these primitive style things. But here's something that I often say when you're doing that, playing what do we say when we see a little kid we're all there and the little kids are running around playing and they're just going and they're going and they're tumbling and they're falling and they're climbing and they're crying and they're laughing they're going to sleep good tonight that's right? right that's right all the problem with the reason we don't sleep as adults is because at some point we bought into the bs lie that you need to stop playing oh you can't play you can't have your shirt off on the football field when it's raining throwing a freaking uh, lacrosse ball at the upright clark you don't do that at 58 you might not, but I do, and I'm going to run around here all day, vitamin D, rain, fun, loving me some me, throwing a thing. I'm going to lay my head down. You could call my wife in here right now and, and ask her, how long does it take Clark to fall asleep? I promise you, I know exactly what she'll say. <laughs> oh, and, and that's one of the, that, is, that is one of the absolute best benefits. Clark, you have been so generous with your time. I mean, I am so grateful, but I can't let you go with that. I want people to know about your book. You've written books, dude. Um, and I've got my shirt coming. I'm pumped. I got the army green one. I think that's a yeah. sweet color, dude. So tell people where they can find you. I've already mentioned uh, Instagram, but where can people find you if, they, if they're interested in your, in your coaching? Uh, I love how you do that too, by the way. It's not just like, oh, I think this looks good. I'm going to sign up. I'll give you some money. No, you actually have a process you go through, which I think I, I, I'm taking that from my coaching. It's like, hey, we might not be a good fit. I don't want you to go around saying that I suck because you didn't participate. We got to make sure this thing works right. So where can people find you and learn more about what you're doing and just put you into their ecosystem, brother, because you are shining light and that's what I want. I want the Jason Wright Show to always be a platform and a bridge to positivity and light in this world. And brother, you check that box for certain. You can just Google me. I'm all over the place. My programs are there. You know, the new Clark Bartram website is just kind of being worked on right now. So the books are on there. I've got audio books and it's, it's not hard to find me. And if you're a man and you want to do the one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, like you said, Jason, there is a specific process that you go through because it's important that we connect with the men that I'm working with. And I, I'll just give you a little something that you can do when you do this as we close out, Jason. This morning, one of my team members sent me a text message of the five men that he has a call with today that filled out the form for the Maximized Man Elite Program. Clark, these are the five men that I'm calling today. So what I do is I send them a message 
hey, Jason, man, I'm really excited. You've got a call with Danny today. I can't wait to find out whether or not I'm a good fit for you. You're a good fit for what I do. Look forward to working with you in the future. And if you choose not to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, we've got other programs available for you that we know can help you get to where you want to go. So rest assured, brother, we got you covered. Make it a great day. Boop, I send the message off. Because it's important that there's a connection there because it is a big ask yeah. for somebody to come and do anything, whether it's $30 for a program or 3000 whatever it is. You're making a transaction, and all relationships are transactional, and I want to make any relationship that I have with somebody be as easy as a transactional process as possible because I want people to know they're dealing with the right guy. Awesome. I love it. Well, sit tight. I'm going to do a little YouTube sign off here and I'll be right back. Folks, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, thank you so much for joining. I, I, if you were not uplifted and if you didn't get anything from that uh, interview with Clark, then I don't know what to do. I may have to hang it up, but I, I'm, I actually, I'm not going anywhere, but so I'm, I'm so grateful for Clark and his time. And hey, if you would, please do me a favor, click subscribe and also leave some comments. If you have some questions for me or for Clark, Please put them in there, get the algorithms going. And also, if you're listening on the uh, on, on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever, please leave a five-star rating. That really helps us in the rankings. And until we meet again, I encourage you to please always endeavor to improve. Always and always, I am out. <laughs>